Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. Um, this chapter will be about making a, a rupee counter and displaying this counter on the screen. So, um, let's 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 what let's make the uh, rupee item. So my name will be rupee.lua and in the friendly name um, we will actually show the three variants that we are gonna make so the first variant number one will be the green rupee uh, then we have the blue rupee um, equivalent to 5 rupees and the red rupee for 20 ok so we have created the, the rupee item um, if we make a very simple map chapter 13 rupee counter This map will be just a very simple room. Um, village. Okay. So now that the rupee item is created, rupee, not, mm, not rupees. Okay. Um, we can we can create treasures with this item on our map. So, if you if you watched the chapter about treasures, mm, you can make pickable treasures like this, and then you choose the treasure and the variant. So, if we want a um, a red rupee. It would be the third variant, like this. And the sprite already exists. Remember that all item sprites are in the sprite um, entities slash items. And the rupee is here with actually there are three um six. Uh, variants, but we are only using the first three ones for this example. But of course, in your game, you can make more. Um, okay, and the second thing you need to do always when you make an item is to create the dialog of obtaining the item. So, open dialog file. Rupee. So we already saw this in the chapter about treasures. You have to make um, a, tre a, di a dialogue whose ID is exactly this underscore treasure dot rupee dot. So here rupee is the file name, it is the ID of the the item, and dot the variant number. So you found. Uh, green rupee and the blue rupee that's five rupees and then the red one that's 20 rupees. Okay. Save. In a future version, dialogues will be. You will be able to edit dialogues in a in a nice interface, in a nice uh, graphical interface, instead of this text file.
Okay, here is our RP. So the RP script is completely empty. In other words, the RP has the default behavior. In particular, um, we don't like the shadow, it's too big for this RP. Um, so if you remember other items, we can initialize things in this function uncreated. Initialize general properties about the item. So this um, this script is called only once when the game starts. So it will it, it it's not called again every time a rupee appear on, appears on the map. There is the function on obtaining. Um, I mean unpickable created for that and also on obtaining for when the player obtains it. Anyway, so when the game is created um, we will initialize the properties of our rupee. So we wanted to change the shadow. So there is a default shadow and here you can, of course, all of this is in the documentation. Let's go to the documentation. Equipment items. So we should find such shadow somewhere. And the parameter is the an animation name in the sprite, in the sprite entities shadow. So you should find entities shadow is here and there are two animations in the link to the past resource pack at least. Big is the default one. So we will use the one called small instead. Okay. Um, something else, when the player in A Link to the Past picks up a ruby, a rupee on the floor like this, um, he does not um, brandish the rupee and he does not, uh, you don't have the sound -da 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 -da, and you don't have the dialogue actually. So this can be customized with set brandish when picked. Force. Also, you can customize the sound. Set, set sound when picked. The default one is um, treasure, but for the rupees, it's different. Okay. Okay, that's better. And one more thing, when you make, um, where is the inside store, I want this, um, okay there is, a, there is a problem with, with this guy, anyway. When you found a treasure under a destructible object, meaning um, a, a vase or a bush, some gra grass or a stone, something like that, um, some items disappear about a few sec uh, um, after a few seconds. No, not rupee icon. What am I doing? Uh, vase. <laughs> Play a sound. Stone. Um, okay. So, if I make a green rupee under the vase, actually, I want this guy to disappear after a few seconds. 
So to do that, there is another function. Set can disappear. Disappear. True. Save and it should go away. It should blink and then disappear after a few seconds. Let's see. Okay, good. And this also applies for enemies, when enemies drop treasures. Not only in um, destructible objects like this. Okay. Um, so now let's define the effect of our item. What happens when the player obtains an instance of of a rupee treasure. Variant, save game variable. So this is very similar to what we did for the flippers. This, ev this event is called when the hero obtains a rupee, no matter if it comes from a pickable treasure a chest, treasure chest, or um, something else. Um, it's even possible to make a script that gives a treasure, like um, an unplaying character who could give something to the player. So, no matter how the player obtained, found the treasure, this function is called and what we want to do is to simply um, give some, some money to the player. So let's get the game. And the game rep also represents the save game, the save data. And there is a function set money and other functions get money, add money, remove money. So we are going to use that. But how much money? It depends on the variant. So we should define uh, maybe in oh, maybe in a variable outside the function because it's independent. I mean it, it's constant. Amounts will be a table with three values, 1, 5, 20. And then the amount we will give is an element of this table and it's the element at index variant. Okay? So in Lua tables are indexed, indexed from 1. This is different from C uh, and other languages. But actually it's, it, it's good for us in this case. End game, add money. Save. So it should have worked, probably, <laughs> but uh, we, we is, there is no way to tell because we haven't made a, a visible rupee counter yet. So let's do that. Um, okay. In the game manager, we in initialized stuff. And in particular, mm, oh, it's chapter 14. How could it work? Why did it work? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. 
Chapter 14. So, Game Manager, Chapter 14, okay, okay. Let's try again, just to be sure. Good. So, a long time ago we did that, initialize data from for new save games, and we, in particular, we decided that the maximum amount of money was, was um, 100. If you don't do that, it will be zero, so <laughs> giving rupees to the player will have no effect because he's he would be he would already be with the maximum uh, game manager so one way to show something in front of the map and to keep to keep it um identical on all maps is to associate it to the game not to the map because it will be the same on all maps okay so we can do this here when we create the, the game and we define some events on the game there is an event on draw that takes the screen as parameter parameter so we actually already um, used the on draw function in the very first episode when we we were simply showing a fixed image but it was not on the game it was on sol.main so it it was really gl global to the whole program we don't want a repeat counter during the title screen or during this Solaris logo we want it once the map th once the game sorry is started okay so how do we show stuff on our destination surface um, we will show a rupee icon and the of course the text the, the amount of rupees number of rupees. Um, in the description of the video you will find a link with this icon, actually these icons. These are the rupee icons of Zelda Mystery of Solaris DX. I don't think they are in A Link to the Past so I didn't include them to the resource pack. So, um, sprite, HUD, rupee icon, okay. So we will need to load our, our image, rupee icon, sol.surface.create, and here you give the file name uh, relative to the sprite directory, so hud slash repeat icon dot png. Okay, um, you can see the documentation of surfaces here. There are two creation function: one that creates an empty surface, an empty image, and the other one creating it from a file name. So every time the game screen is redrawn, so probably something like 50 times per second, this function is called. This function is called. So you really don't want to load the image, the image every time the game is redrawn. That's why we we want to create load it outside the function. Okay. And when we redraw the screen, we take our icon and draw it on the screen, on the game screen. Okay, repeat icon, draw surface. You can already try that. Oops. 
So, <laughs> first of all, we have three icons instead of one because it's the full PNG image. And second, we want to actually show it here. So to do that, this draw function has a lot more optional parameters actually. Um, all drawable objects have this function draw. Uh, when we when we want to draw a sub region of an image, you can use draw region instead of just draw. Okay, so draw region. Which region? So it is zero zero twelve twelve actually. And the coordinates, the top left coordinates, and the width and height of the rectangle you want to extract from the from the image. Then you say where on the destination image. You say is the destination image, and then you say where on the destination image. So. It will be um, 10 and 220, okay. Good. And last thing, we want now to show the text. So similarly, we will create a text text object outside the function text surface and um, okay and then we will show it repeat text draw on the screen and where on the screen? 25 mm, 220 I think it's okay Oh, I forgot to <laughs> to define the text to show set text so the again the API of text surface surfaces is here under drawable objects. Everything is explained here. You can create your text surface and then set a lot of properties including the text and the font. So the text will be game get money obviously okay So maybe this is best. Okay, good. So you should define what font you want to use. If you are running like me, Solaris 1.3, um, fonts are defined in this file. Um, text fonts dot that and the default one is the first one so you can try these ones if you prefer and as of version 1.4 which is still not released at the time I'm, I'm recording the video um, fonts will appear in these lists like all other kinds of resources and this file no longer exists. <coughs> so let's say explicitly that we want this one because um, in version 1.4 and after there is n no longer a notion, a notion of default font. It will simply be the first one in alphabetical order. So, okay, good. And it works. 
Um, as a future improvement, maybe you will want to display the text gradually and not directly jump from 0 to 20. So this can be done with timers and we will see that later. But for now, it's okay like this. Um, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and see you later. Bye!